Royal you family, I've had my Chase Sapphire preferred Visa card for a little over a year now. Getting a credit score high enough to be approved for it was not hard at all. I recommend you get one if you are a frequent traveler. I want to share the benefits of having one and how my experience has been so far owning this Chase Sapphire Visa card. Engage. Travel is my passion, passion, passion. PassportKings.com Your travel lifestyle will never be the same again. My name is Rock Land. I'm a travel enthusiast and travel advisor who makes videos to inform, review, and excite you about every kind of vacation destination. If this is a topic you like, consider subscribing to Passport Kings and ring the bell so you can be the first in the know when I upload new content. When I went to Johannesburg, South Africa, I made a lot of purchases using my debit card. Most establishments had convenient, portable card swiping machines that gave me the convenience of not converting my USD cash into South African rands. Plus, I also have an option on my bank account app that gives gives me an immediate update of purchases I've made and how much money I spent. The conversions was being done instantly and all was well with the world, so I thought. A few weeks after the trip, I noticed an abundance of transaction fees were being charged to my card for every separate thing that I purchased. It didn't add up to that much. For example, with the $40 purchase, they would add an extra $3, but it was an unwelcome surprise and I started scrambling in my head wondering and trying to remember all the things I bought. It's an experience I would rather not have again while traveling internationally and spending money abroad. I decided then that I wanted to get my credit under control and get a credit card that focused mainly on travel benefits. That's when I eyed this baby and did what it took to have a credit score that was good enough to get approved for it. My credit was not so good, but making it better was a lot easier than I thought it would be. All I did was got a Visa credit card with a very forgiving approval score. I made purchases with it, but always kept my purchases under 30% of the full amount. And then I paid back the card's purchase by the end of the month. I also opened an account with Credit Karma so I could see what was being reported about me. And I disputed everything even messes that I knew for a fact that I created. To my surprise, a lot of bad marks disappeared from my credit report, and about nine months later, Credit Karma told me I had a fair chance of getting a Chase Sapphire Visa. So I applied for it, and they approved me. I've added a link in the description, so if you want to apply for one, you can. Just know that it is an affiliate link, and I may receive compensation for referring you. But if you're wondering, this is absolutely my everyday credit card, especially when I'm traveling. There are some benefits that I expected because of their ads, but there are also some benefits that came as a pleasant surprise for me. So this is a list of the five things that I love about my Chase Sapphire Preferred Visa card. Number one, free money. The first thing I took advantage of is a gift and a curse at the same time. The Chase Sapphire Preferred card will give you a 60,000 ultimate rewards point bonus after you spend $4,000 in the first three months. I was not too eager to spend $4,000 in my first three months because I wanted to keep my 30% ratio on this card like I did when I had the other card, which helped my credits go out tremendously. But 60,000 free points just couldn't be ignored. If converted to cash, it'd come up to about 600 bucks that they would give to you for free. Well, I guess for card usage. The best thing to do with the points, however, is to purchase travel. Chase has a travel portal in the members area of its website. And if you use the points to travel, you can get a trip that's worth double the amount of cash that you would have received for cashing your bonus points out. All I would advise is as soon as you get the card, use it for all your bills and all your everyday purchases. Then when your paycheck comes, send your money directly to the card. If you make a decent income, you can pay it back in no time. Number two, maintaining my credit ratio. There is a $95 annual fee. That seemed like nothing to me, but at the same time, you have to keep your APR in mind. This is something that the ads seem to not mention often. If you are running a balance, like if what you owe is not back down to zero by the end of the month, you will have to pay a monthly fee. That's why I suggest that whatever you buy with it, you pay this card off immediately when you get money from elsewhere. Hopefully you're getting residual money. Mine came from planet marketing and IntelliTravel. So instead of pocketing my commission checks for selling travel and travel businesses, I just sent my payout directly to my card. After being in a $4,000 hole, I got it back down to zero in no time. Nowadays, I only spend 30% of my total credit. Number three, ultimate rewards points, which you will receive from every purchase that you make. This is one of the most valuable points currencies available. I know I said to use it on all of your bills, but keep in mind that you will earn two times the points on dining and travel, including expenses like food and grocery delivery services like Uber Eats or DoorDash, tolls, Ubers, rental cars, and a lot more. 
If your purchase has anything to do with expenses associated to traveling, chances are you will earn two times the points by using the Chase Sapphire Visa card. Number four, foreign transaction fees. As mentioned in my story about Johannesburg, this is the main reason I wanted this card above all of the rest that were advertised to me. As you probably know, I travel a lot. The further away I get from home, the happier I am. Now, when I use my Chase Sapphire in other countries, I very rarely convert my money to the currency of the country. I use my Chase all willy-nilly because I know that I will not have any surprise charges when I get home. There are no foreign transaction fees. Like most credit cards, it takes a little while for the app to update my balance, but it also sends me a notification to my phone every time it's swiped. My Chase debit card had very low foreign transaction fees, but now I have none. And number five, all of the travel protection. Its chip and signature technology has worldwide acceptance. You will be hard pressed to find a place that doesn't accept your card and most importantly it provides the most security I've ever had against fraud on my card. Plus I never called them to let them know that I'm traveling because they expect it. There's nothing worse than your card shutting off while you are abroad because they think it's being used without your permission. Especially when you are somewhere that has bad phone signals and limitations. The Chase Sapphire Visa also gives you rental car insurance which which could come in handy even though my regular car's insurance company provides that service, it's still good to know that I won't have to file a claim with them which could raise my rates. Now this card also offers baggage delay insurance up to 500 bucks and they will give you $100 a day for each day your bag is delayed. You may be eligible for up to $3,000 in lowest luggage coverage if you have receipts for all the items that were in your bag. Extended warranty protection for up to $10,000 on large purchases. Purchase protection for regular things you buy from most stores if it's damaged or stolen, but that's for 120 days. Trip cancellation slash trip interruption insurance up to $10,000. So even if you get sick and had a non-refundable flight, you can get your money back. It even has trip delay reimbursement. So you and your family can get up to $500 per ticket of non-reimbursed expenses, such as meals and lodging, if the flight is delayed for more than 12 hours and you're stuck in an airport hotel. And that's my top five benefits, but I do have a complaint. This is silly, but I have one main complaint, and that's the actual color of the card. The pictures on the internet of it made it seem super glossy and shiny, but it's quite dull with an almost matte finish. The benefits will provide excellent value and make life easier while you're traveling, so I guess I'm able to forgive the dull colored blue. It is heavier than most cards, and it slaps on the table like an overzealous spades player when you present it to a waiter. So if you are a jet setting frequent traveler, click on my link in the description so you can apply for your own Chase Sapphire Visa. I didn't even mention that it comes with accident insurance, zero liability protection, plus travel and emergency assistance services. When you're traveling the world, let your Chase Sapphire preferred Visa card make your travel lifestyle a whole lot easier like a king, a passport king. Peace.